Thank you very much, Michael, for the kind uh, invitation and introduction. Well, that was a challenging title you gave me, and uh, I hope I'll meet your expectations here. Um, this is the place I just came from yesterday. That's the place we have the privilege to do our faculty development at, and this is our latest class of graduates. And I'm, I'm very proud to say that it's the 52nd course over 26 years we can do there at an institution. It's a nunnery on an island. It was founded in the eighth century. And I'm also um, proud to say that our university this year has its 550th birthday. So there are long time <laughs> existing institutions, church and university, but still we, we always have the feeling to do things quickly, improve our curricula. And I personally believe I have 10 more years to go that it's one more round of curricula change I could really try to manage in my role of the Dean of Studies. I'm really grateful that we um, heard about the Jagiellonian University example the Canadian framework perspective, we learned a lot from that and try to adapt that to our German national level lead and also the World Federation perspective on Europe. I have also to say that at this place in a two month time, we have uh, 20 Ukrainian teachers from three Ukrainian universities to discuss with them how we could support digital learning um, from our experiences. What do I want to tell you uh, today? That's a kind of weird mix of a national perspective, how Germany is trying to approach curricular change and innovation, and my LMU uh, perspective from, from Munich. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose in the sense that I have no commercial activity. It is all in my role of um, uh, Dean of Studies. I'm telling you here and as a non-for-profit journal editor in the end. Um, curriculum is about patients, about students, and about teachers. It's about learning, teaching, and assessment. Constructive alignment has been uh, mentioned. So here you see some pictures from our school um, with patients, with simulated patients, with models, discussion between teacher and student, and also um, assessment through um, digital means. So everything we do with cognitive assessment is um, uh, with tablets now. And even during the pandemic, we uh, were able to keep up this, this approach. So um, again, the story will have those two different flight levels. We are in the midst of a complex route to curriculum reform in Germany as a country. Um, we expect a major new legislation, legislation for 2026, and uh, we are preparing for that. And on the other hand, we have a large diversity of schools with different contextual factors and different ways of tackling curricular challenges. And I want to tell you some of those impressions from the LMU uh, perspective. Um, this picture is just the idea that it's a teamwork and not everybody is looking in the same direction. And it's a real difficult challenge between the subject experts that all have different perspectives and overarching concepts like clinical reasoning, where we were discussing earlier how to integrate those. And um, sometimes the leaders are not fully visible here. And uh, sometimes those who give the rhythm of change here, uh, as I said, look into the wrong direction. By the way, we won the race against our technical university in Munich. Very important site here. Um, German uh, medical education, in a nutshell, for those who don't know the context we are talking about, we have 39 medical faculties, mostly public, but there's a major dynamic with new public schools being founded, like Augsburg, um, for example, um, and also a couple of so-called private faculties with different European um, home bases and connections. 
That's very interesting. And also we have a number of clinical campuses being founded and created in relation to classical public schools. We have a six year curriculum and it's mostly traditionally organized with two years of preclinical and three years of clinical studies and then the final sixth year is kind of a sub internship. Um, and there is a federal regulation, Ärztliche Approbationsordnung. Still within this regulation, there are some um, integrated curricula, but there are national exams, um, oral and written in an MCQ format. And still, I have to say, they are not carried out these MCQ questions in digital format, which is astonishing, I think. Maybe we discuss assessment strategies for the future. Um, the number of, of uh, faculties that use an integrated approach across preclinical and clinical years is growing every year. Augsburg is one of the examples. There are many more, and I think 12, it's even too low nowadays. I, I don't even know how many are coming into this, um, this group of integrated curricular schools. And this kind of uh, tells us from a traditional approach like, like LMU Munich, where we will have to go. And um, that's the 2026 thing, one of the major challenges. We have around 11,000 graduates per year in Germany. And politicians say, we need more. It's not enough. I don't know whether this is true, because I think delegation and substitution of work with other health professions is also an issue, physician assistants, are coming up also in, in, in Germany, it's a big debate. More physicians is always good, but it's very expensive and very challenging to do that. Maybe we can discuss that. LMU is a special case. It's a very large school, 950 preclinical students per year, 550 clinical, and we give the others to the Technical University in Munich, a wonderful school as well. Um, I'm very grateful that Andrei Kononovich used this model, the six or even seven step uh, curriculum development model from Kern. We use that as well. And I want to use this uh, to, to structure my talk a little bit. And I will give you some glimpses and ideas from the two different flight levels, German national curricula change and development perspective and LMU, at least through the steps one to six. So general needs assessment. <clears throat> Um, renovation has to, be, has to be done. In summary, I think we have a rapidly aging population as a major challenge, shortage of physicians, especially in rural areas, big challenge, over and under treatment issues, same disease in Munich, very different from some rural area. Um, as I mentioned, lack of delegation, substitution of responsibilities and in interprofessional teams. Um, digital healthcare and all its consequences, we are not very fast with that in Germany. And then a very new and dramatic challenge has been around for years, but now it's very, very clear we need to act as a sustainability issue and our students really urge us to put that into our curriculum, um, one health and planetary health uh, topics. So um, needs of our targeted learners, the medical students, um, and that has been supported by the government in 2017. It's already five years ago. It's called Master Plan Medical mm -hmm. Education 2020. Very slow process. Strengthening general practice and training in every curriculum in Germany. Strengthening interprofessional education. Strengthening scientific reasoning competencies for better practice. With respect to evidence-based medicine, I think clinical reasoning is a special case of good scientific reasoning from my perspective. So there are some general principles, and I would challenge the context specificity. I think there is some general approach to good argumentation, and there's research on that. But I like this debate with Steve and others. Um, then. We want a more diverse student population to be admitted to medical schools, not only high school graduates with good grades, but people with professional backgrounds uh, from the healthcare uh, system. 
Um, and that's also achieved by, by specific measures of quota for these groups. Then the digital health, health challenge is, is very important at all levels and the planetary health uh, issues have come in addition to the other topics after this master plan has been published. <coughs> Excuse me, learning goals and objectives. We learned a lot from the Canadians. We also learned from the Swiss. Thanks for referring to the profiles. And we are in the midst of, of hopefully finalizing the second version of our, and it's called National Competency-Based Catalog of Learning Objectives. We heard about those wonderful definitions. And I try in a very condensed way to tell you about this process. Um, this is a picture from happy times many years ago. We started in 2009 and trying to dwell on the Canadian, the UK, the Scottish, the Swift, Swift and uh, Dutch uh, catalogs. And um, that's uh, a publication from national experts to give us advice on how to use this kind of a um, competency uh, and learning objectives national framework. Um, I have to tell you that our German approach very sorrow, but it led to a product that's unusable. It's a 350 pages document and the reduction of what has to be taken out is an eternal and constant struggle and hundreds of experts from all the scientific associations, including surgery, are fighting still and, and still uh, it's unclear how we can boil that down. I think the profiles way the Swiss showed us is interesting, but there's hope. And this is a busy slide, be aware. You shouldn't be able to read that in German, but it's the summary of the whole concept. And I think it makes clear that this is a lifelong learning process. I don't know if you can see that the, the timeline is a lifelong learning process. And you see that blue arrow on the top and that's the line between on the left hand side it's undergrad and on the right hand side it's postgraduate training. And all that's important here are the roles of the physician, right? And here it's not leader, uh, Janusz, but it's somebody taking on responsibilities and manager. So maybe we should replace that with leader, but that's not a good German translation I have in mind here. So. <laughs> to work on that. But still, these are the roles that are familiar from CANMADS, adapted. The um, red thing here is called visionary. I like that role. We added that. And the big bracket here on the left-hand side is the medical expert as the overarching integrating concept. And what's interesting over time is now the integration of these little dots, connecting the dots as pieces of knowledge. Then you have these um, parts of a cake here, these, these are symbolizing skills, practical skills, communication skills. And over time, this, this should be integrated into nested EPAs, which are parts of cakes. And then in the end, in the final year, the practices, yeah, that's the sixth year, the sub-internship year, you have master EPAs in a supervised way. And we only have six of them. And these top level EPAs like taking care of the patient in an inpatient setting are then um, explained in, in sub EPAs in that, in that sense, right? So the idea of integrating that should be clear and the idea of continuing this process postgraduate should be visualized here. And the other thing is constructive alignment, which method of assessment is coming, along, coming with this process and how that does that play together. So it's very complex, but I like it because it integrates all the different levels we also heard from, from you from the Canadian uh, perspective. Okay, read more about this. It's published as the profile of outcomes from the German perspective. Um, some comments on teaching methods and strategies, and of course, this is related to the pandemic. 
Um, I very much like the idea of virtual patients and simulations, and I work for that as a medical educator and educational researcher. But on the faculty level, of course, you saw that picture from Inga. We had a lot of virtual patients now, more than before. We used them at our school, and we also started a national initiative to share them. Um, number two, this is um, Web Encounter from Drexel University. Um, we try to use electronic means for uh, communication skills training with standardized patients working from home and giving feedback through that tool that worked quite nicely when we had to, we were not able to use live standardized patients. Luckily, we can use them now again. And you saw that picture before, that was a picture pre-pandemic, but symbolized the total integration of all the cognitive level assessments in digital formats. And we haven't used all the potential benefits of that, but I'm proud to say that during the whole time of the pandemic, we were able to keep up assessment in face-to-face -face settings in presence, um, at least cognitively. So um, that's one picture summarizing this. There is time to celebrate. It worked better than we expected. And I'm speaking not only for LMU Munich, but for all the schools in Germany that the momentum of, of using electronic approaches synchronously, asynchronously in the crisis for teaching, the very positive unifying experience. We had conferences every two weeks between all the schools exchanging ideas and experiences, but also there are limitations to them. You all know this. And the new balance, the new normal is still not totally clear. I'm working hard to offer as much face-to-face -face teaching as possible, but some teachers really enjoy staying at home somewhere, <laughs> not seeing the students anymore. So we are not done with this negotiation to find the right balance. Now, just uh, time is running fast. Some comments on implementation and integration. Um, we have a national initiative that was ignited by the pandemic to share educational resources. And just want to focus on this um, benefit from the crisis that led to public money from the government to use all the virtual patients we already have, all the videos, everything that's available and could be shared on a platform hosted by uh, Charité in Berlin. And you see the national catalog logo on the left upper and side. So this is all free, freely accessible for all students and all teachers um, uh, in Germany. And um, we are trying to expand on that collection. We had money to improve our virtual patients. And now we share these uh, resources, especially the virtual patient with three Ukrainian universities, as Inga said before, in a nationally uh, funded project and translate them. and. Hopefully, um, this movement will continue and we'll share more resources in the future. Um, now, evaluation and feedback. Um, I think it's very hard to have good studies going with major curricular, curricular reform. It's really important to formulate uh, research questions that are not um, methodologically fraught. So I want to of Norman here with his, I think, sometimes very ironical approach. Maybe you know this commentary uh, from uh, 2003, that it's really hard to scientifically compare different curricular approaches. And the question you asked in the, in the beginning, why should we do, is, is change really necessary, uh, is a key question. So of course, this is driven by enthusiasm, but also by ownership. And Geoff said, I, you cannot tell me if this is better or not, just the curricular merry-go-round effect. I think one part of it, but I think if we all agree we need to change because of societal uh, challenges, general needs assessment, I mentioned all the topics we are dealing with, I think it's well justifiable to make a major curricular change. 
So maybe another round in 2026 for all the medical schools in Germany. I'm looking forward for that, to that as a medical educator and I want to be part of that. And in summary, I believe, yes, we need a major curricular reform, of course, with respect to clinical reasoning, integrating all the subjects uh, with a joint approach. But also, um, I think that the competency-based medical education with a focus on outcomes is just at the beginning, and we want to do that at LMU across preclinical and clinical years. We want to keep integrating and exploring as an evolutionary process with a focus on interprofessional education, ambulatory medicine settings. We haven't uh, integrated well enough planetary health and uh, some others, of course, uh, digital teaching and learning and digital medicine. We want to find a good balance between face-to-face -face and different modes of digital teaching and learning methods. And we want to improve formative assessment and feedback culture in relation to that. And that should combine our national framework, the EPA's outcomes, competence, and competencies with all levels of assessment. You've seen that Miller pyramid many times before today. It's another graphical representation of that. So across all of those levels between cognition and behavior, and want to relate that to our local Munich context with many special challenges I couldn't go into in detail. So I'm very optimistic for this process. It's very, very challenging. Many stakeholders, and you have to report about this, scientific studies. And I'm grateful Michal is one of the co-editors at our fancy open access non-for-profit journal, of course, will get an impact factor beginning of 2023. So I invite you all to send your manuscripts, and thank you for your attention. Martin, congratulations on uh, great work, uh, not only at LMU, but also at uh, bringing yet another journal to medical education uh, community, which is, well, it was yeah, your... You, you told me Polish people don't publish there because there is no impact factor. Now you have no excuses. Well, that's absolutely correct, and I'm quite sure there are some papers on the way already. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, anyway, it's really, really important that there is one more journal where we can publish because there is uh, very few uh, of those, and uh, actually this is a big problem, at least for us. But um, uh, you've mentioned some really great achievements that you had, great job, but you've mentioned also difficulties. Would you, to, yes, to you'd, you'd, well, as always, uh, would there be anything different in the process, something you would be doing, you, you would do differently uh, now from that perspective, considering your, your problems on the way? With respect to what part? National catalog or uh, LMU? Your local, I, I, I mean uh, okay. uh, LMU. Well, that, that's special. So again, we have a very large preclinical student body. I cannot change that. So we have a Y-shaped curriculum. I can only work on the one arm of the clinical curriculum myself. I would change that and make two, two separate curricula out of that, but I can. Nobody listens to me. I'm not at that decision level, number one. Number two, I would try to really use the approach that has been mentioned before, say, forget about our curriculum, not discuss what to kick out or what to squeeze in, but just step back and have a group of people authorized to go to the island for five days and come up with a totally new approach without selling your own product only. And that is kind of a Z dream like in Xerox Park, I think many years ago. Hopefully we'll get that done and we need external evaluation to encourage us. And that's the third point. I would like to have an external evaluation as soon as possible to give us help with that. Very nice idea. External credibility, uh, you know, uh, affirmation is actually sometimes very, very useful since we have already established that, that no one is a prophet in his own place. Thank you very uh, much, Martin. Thank you very much, for, yeah. uh, Thanks for, for your lecture. patience.